Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you that are visiting for the first time, my name is Melissa Reed and I am a mixed media intuitive artist from Pennsylvania. And today I am going to kind of continue with what I've been doing in my last few videos. Um, you won't miss anything if you haven't seen them, but I do encourage you to take a look. Uh, I am working on some test pieces that are hopefully going to employ some techniques that I'm going to use on a large scale piece that I'm working on for a juried exhibit that I'm planning on entering um, soon, actually. I just realized the deadline is in like a week, so it's coming along. And um, actually, if you wanna see the progress of that piece, stick around to the end. I have some progress pictures and I think it is really actually coming along nicely. I can't wait to see how it all looks finished and to show you guys. So what I'm doing here, I have a cradled board, which I have gessoed, and it's a six inch by 12 inch. And I am just laying down some acrylic paint there with um, just with a card. I think it's like an old store card or something. I've got some burnt sienna and raw sienna because I'm looking for earth tones with this one, which I typically do mostly earth tones in my pieces. Not always, but that's kind of been the general theme of my last several pieces. Um, so what I'm doing here is using a color shaper just to move the paint around a little bit on the board. I just started using these just maybe, I don't know, a month or so ago. And now that I'm kind of getting the hang of them, I really do like the different techniques that you can get with them. Sometimes I apply paint directly with them like I'm doing here. But one thing that I like that I've been able to do is once the paint is on the surface, whether you're using a canvas or a board, I've done it on both, is to just kind of go back over with the color shaper and it just kind of pulls a little bit of the paint in a direction. It moves it sort of, I guess. It's a look that I can't quite get with using like an old gift card or something like that, or definitely not a paintbrush. So I do like to use those color shapers for that. So my plan for this piece, or at least as much of a plan as I had, which wasn't a whole lot, because like I mentioned, I'm an intuitive artist and I work mostly just by feel, but I kind of had wanted to go back into this piece and use some of my burned paper technique that I mentioned in my last few videos. And if you haven't seen those, I'm going to be demonstrating that and show you what I mean with that here shortly. My thought at this point in the piece, and I say that because it changes pretty much continually through my art process, and that's just part of my process as an intuitive artist, but at this point, my thought was I wanted to lay some watercolor down. This is watercolor paper that I have here, and I cut it to shape to fit um, to fit within the borders of that cradled board that I'm using. So I wet the watercolor paper, and I'm just laying down some golds and yellows and a little bit of a burnt sienna color. Um, this is a really old paint set that I just happened to have. I'm not actually even sure where I got it. Possibly Amazon. I'll have to look and see if I can find a link. But my thought process was I wanted to use the watercolors so that there was some color down on the paper before I started using my burning technique on it. And I had done that before many years ago. Uh, this is actually a technique that I've been using probably for about 10 years in my work. But I was thinking that that might be the direction where I wanted to go with these. And it is, but I changed it a good bit along the way as well. All right, so at this point, while I'm waiting for those watercolor sheets to dry, I knew all along that I wanted to use some copper foil in this. I love using metallic foils in my work. If you've seen my other videos, if you've seen any of my work on either my Instagram or my Etsy shop or my Facebook business page, you will see that I have, you know, that's foils and circles are themes that are pretty consistent in a lot of my work. So I knew from the beginning that I wanted to use some of that. And the copper foil that I'm using, um, which I'll put a link in the description uh, where I got that, actually all of these things that I'm using, I will have links for as many of them as I know. But I spread down a little bit of the foil adhesive there, which is just something that I picked up at Michael's. And now I'm just laying down these sheets of the copper foil, which I did get off of Amazon. Um, 
they sell them at Michael's obviously too, but I was able to get them for a much better price on Amazon and they work just as well. I've had no issues with them. So you lay down the adhesive, let it cure for about a half an hour, and then you can lay your sheets of foil down, which is what I'm doing here. And once they are all in place, I have a very soft bristled brush here. And I know somebody's gonna ask me where I got that. And the short answer for that is, I don't know its origin. I actually bought it at an art thrift shop near my house and it was in a set that someone had given away. It was a, a really cool um, wooden box full of a bunch of paints and brushes and that brush was in there. I'm not even exactly sure what that brush is called. I'm not really up on my paint brushes. If anybody knows, please feel free to drop that in the comments. I would love to know. But I used that soft brush first to brush off all of the excess um, like the loose flakes of the foil and then I have a much stiffer bristle brush, brush that I'm using there and that kind of cleans up all of the crumbs and gets everything in a much smoother kind of cleaner state so that I can continue to work on top of it. What I'm doing here, I grabbed one of the um, liner sheets that go between the foils that they're just there basically to keep them separate but it has it's almost like a, a wax paper kind of thickness and I just crumpled it up and um, I'm scrubbing it over the top because it's making it look a little weathered which is kind of the look that I wanted to have for this. And you can get that look using a bunch of different things. I've used sandpaper in the past and while that works it does dull the foil to a degree that I didn't really want to happen in this piece so um, that brush doesn't seem to do that. So right now I'm trying to still kind of figure out exactly what I want to do on the top of this. I have the watercolored sheets and they are dry now. That's what I have there, but I'm trying to decide if that's the route that I want to go. And f and it still is for now. And it actually will end up, I will end up using those in the end, but they are going to get changed even further. I'm starting out with cutting them into threes because three is always a good Odd numbers are always best for composition. Three is especially good. And so that's what I thought I was going to do, but that ends up getting changed too, because like I said, this is just an ongoing process for me and it's there's no real plan. I, I like to just go and see what happens in the moment. I find that I get better results. When I try to plan something out too much, I tend to get caught up in the minutia of trying to get everything exactly a way that I have in my head. And I don't always end up really liking it. I find that I prefer the way my work looks much better when I just really go at it intuitively and make those really quick decisions. But that's also why a lot of times things get changed because when you're making decisions that quickly, Sometimes they don't necessarily work out the way you want them to. But at any rate, I decided that I didn't like the yellow anymore and I wanted to go in with some reds and oranges. And I do really like the way that it looks there. Um, with watercolors though, if you've ever used them, you will know that they don't they are not the same wet as they are dry. And I really love the vibrance of them right here, the reds and the oranges. I just think they're beautiful. But of course, they're gonna dry to be a much less vibrant color. But while they were drying, I had some time, so I thought I would go ahead and paint the sides of my board there. I am using um, Saks True Flow Heavy Bodied Acrylic Mars black paint. That was a mouthful, I realize. I have that listed in my description. There's a link um, along with links to most of the other items that I'm using there. I like to do this process of painting the sides before the piece is finished because for me, it helps me to be able to see it as a finished piece. I don't know why that is or if anyone else does that as well, but I for me, it just really draws the piece together and helps me see not frayed edges, not paint splashed down where I didn't want it, but what it's actually going to look like done. And therefore, I can more easily make those on the fly decisions that I'm making moment by moment when I'm creating a piece. 
And also with a lot of the techniques that I'm using, there is a fair amount of dry time, drying time in between some of the steps. So if I can use that time to, you know, get something else done, then I will do that. Okay. So now I'm going to demonstrate what I was talking about before as far as my burned paper technique that I use. And so I have those watercolored pieces that are cut out in the random shapes that I made. I have my wood burning tool that I had plugged in and have let heat up to the point where it's ready to singe my paper there. And I'm going to just go ahead. The first thing I'm going to do is take it around all of the sides because I like that burned singed edge look. It just gives a really grungy kind of like lived in raw quality, which I like in my work. Um, I'm not going to obviously show this whole process because I think it took me probably over an hour, possibly an hour and a half to get all of the burning done for this piece. And that would just be completely complete and utter boredom for you to watch. It really wasn't <laughs> that exciting doing it when I was actually the one sitting up there doing it. And I had to take several breaks because um, the smoke just kept coming right up into my face and it, you know, it's a process like anything else we do, but um, I do keep that shop towel that I have underneath there, that blue towel, sprayed with water because occasionally you'll get a, you know, a little chunk that wants to just keep burning, excuse me, wants to just keep burning. And um, I like to keep that wet towel handy because when that happens, I can just go ahead and tap that down on the wet paper towel and it immediately puts that out. So now that I've got the papers all edged, I'm just kind of going along and trying to decide on my design again before I go in and start burning the holes. And this again, this took a really long time, so I'm not going to show you each and every little thing that I did, but here's an example of what I'm talking about with the burn paper. I just use the wood burner to burn holes. You can make really tiny holes. You can make really large ones, depending on how much pressure you put on the wood burning tool. But at the end of it, this is what I get. And it's this really delicate, lacy kind of burned piece of paper. I don't really know how else to describe it, but I love using them in my work in different elements. Um, I have been using them as collage papers in my last few videos, but I'm going to do something a little bit different today. And this is actually a method that I used to use about 10 years ago when I was making some art, but I wanted to kind of bring it back around and uh, try a couple of different techniques with some of the gold foil on these sheets because I was thinking about possibly using them in that large um, entry that I'm going to be putting together here. But here are all the pieces now that I have them all cut out and all burned and I'm not loving the red. So for a minute I'm thinking, do I want to flip them over, ignore the red, and just use the paper color? But it really wasn't speaking to me either. I liked it, but because of the foil, it almost kind of blended into the background. So I still wasn't sure. So at this point, I decided to run some experiments. So I have all my pieces laid out in front of me and I'm squeezing a little bit of the gold foil adhesive just onto an old yogurt container. And I want to foil the piece. I've been trying to figure out how to get a gold piece burned. And there's really no good way to do it because if you put the foil on the piece first and then try to burn the holes, the um, the adhesive is toxic <laughs> when you're burning it. So you really don't want to be breathing in those fumes. So that really was not a good, um, good solution. So I was thinking that this is probably going to be the way to go, but I hadn't tried it yet. So I'm going to give it a try right here. And like I said before, when you lay the adhesive down, you have to let it cure for about a half an hour. And then you can come in with these foil sheets and just kind of press it over the top. I'm kind of just rubbing it in a little bit. And I'm going to go in with my two brushes 
and just remove all of the excess. This soft one is really nice because it lets me get inside all of those holes without doing any damage um, and I'm just removing the large chunks with that. But then I'm going to go ahead in with this stiffer one and I'm holding it in my hand there which I realized after a little while it's actually much easier if you lay it down on the table and you can really get enough pressure on there to remove all of the rough edges and make it look exactly like you want. But I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. And um, whenever I'm using foil, I always use it on a sheet of paper or something so that I can save the crumbs because there's no reason to waste it really. So now that I've got that first initial red piece covered in the foil, I like it better, but I'm still not 100% sure. I do love the way the unpainted sheet looks, but with all of them on there, again, in the gold, it was just, the tones were too similar and it, it there wasn't enough contrast and it was kind of just not, not doing what I wanted it to do. So I thought, well, maybe if I cover that with some of the foil and try that, that would be the solution that I'm looking for. So I'm painting some more of the adhesive on the, what is, you know, the back of one of the red pieces and I'm just gonna let that cure up and we will see what happens here in just a moment. So now that that's dry, I'm putting some more foil down on top of that and I had enough large chunks left in my crumb cup there that I was able to just lay some of those across the top and um, get the coverage that I needed. I probably had a little more foil on there than I really needed. I should have probably left a little bit more blank, but it gave me the information that I was after for this technique. And it does work and I do like it and I will be using this in the future. I will actually be using this on the large piece. Um, I'll have some pictures at the end where I do have some of that on there. So now I'm going to just place these again and see if it's any better or any worse. And I like it, but it's still kind of just not, not what I wanted. So the more I think about it, the more I'm going to stick with the red. And I decide at that point, I'm going to just lay them all out and get them foiled up and see what I can put together. Almost like you do in collage, there was a lot of uh, rearranging of shapes and patterns just to see if I could get something that I liked better, you know, but this was the orientation that I decided on. I really like the irregularity of the sizes. They're not all, they're cut from the same sheet of paper, but they're not all uniform, and I really like that. So I'm just going in here to finish the adhesive part of this, and once I get all of that on there and let it set up and cure for another half an hour. I'm going to come in and finish foiling the, the each individual sheet and then I can see what I've got going on f as far as to put on the piece. One thing that I like best about the type of artwork that I make is the large amount of experimentation involved in it. I will get a loose idea, not really know exactly what I want to do, and just spend a day in the studio trying to make my idea come to life, and then then I will have, I might not be using it on a specific piece at the moment, but I will have that in the back of my mind as a technique that I could use on something intuitive that I'm doing in the future. And I just have this like little mental stockpile of these uh, neat little ideas that I come up with and, and, you know, experiments that I try that sometimes I think of and sometimes I'll see something that someone else did and I'll think, oh, that's really cool. Maybe I could change that somehow. But that's one of my favorite parts of the process of my making my work.
I love how these pieces are looking. This is exactly what I was kind of trying to figure out how to make happen. And um, so I used the watercolor paper specifically for the reason of trying out this technique. Obviously, you wouldn't want to use a thin paper because it's not going to withstand the vigorous brushing that I'm doing there to try to get the foils off. So you, the watercolor paper was chosen on purpose for that purpose. Okay, now I've got my pieces and I'm laying them out on the board and I definitely like it better. The gold carries, or I'm sorry, the copper carries through from the back onto the front, which I like. And the red makes a little more sense now. It's not too much, but I can clearly see the contrast between the pieces. So here you see me using a glue gun. I have not done this before, but I thought it was a good way to build up um, height because I'm not trying to like I said, I'm not collaging this down. This is not going to be a flat piece. I want this to be raised off of the board so that there is dimension to it. I've done pieces like this before in the past, and what I used for that was straight pins. And it it works, but they're very fragile. So I would put glue on the head of the straight pin to glue the paper to it. Um, but before I did that, I would pound the straight pins into the wood that I was using. And at the time, I was using reclaimed wood so it was a little on the softer side and it kind of you could kind of get away with that a little bit more but i wanted to try something different today because honestly i didn't even know if the, i'd be able to get the pins in the cradled board i kind of didn't think so and i thought what can i use to give me a little bit of dimension um and i thought okay well i'll try the glue gun i don't think that it's going to be a great solution long term because if you've ever used a glue gun they're not really i don't know they don't they don't stick forever, but a way that I think I could get around that is to use them to build up the height and then maybe glue them down with some other type of adhesive. But here is the finished piece. Um, it does not have a name yet, but I'm going to try to come up with one. I don't believe I'm going to put this one up for sale in my Etsy shop just for shipping purposes, and I don't know that that glue is going to hold, but it did really give me a lot of um, knowledge in making the experiments and trying to find some techniques that I'll be able to use in future pieces. So thank you everyone for coming on this journey with me and don't forget to stick around to the end to see my progress on the large piece. But um, thanks to everybody who has subscribed to my channel and thank you for all the comments and all the thumbs ups. I really appreciate that. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, please do now and throw me a thumbs up on the way out. And stick around, I wanna show you my progress. So this first picture is just the whole entire piece, and then I'm gonna go in with some detail shots here so you can see each individual component a little bit better. This is a 30 by 40 inch cradled board, by the way. You can see some of the techniques that I've used in the past that I'm doing here. There's some gold foil, there's some collage, um, there's some gel prints on there that I've made myself, and just another little shot of that. I'm doing all of these. There's gonna be a series of nine planetoid type shapes on here and each of them is gonna be slightly different. Some of them are done with paint. I have texture in a lot of them, and I'm using a lot of the, like I said, the collage papers, a lot of the foil, and some of the burn pieces. This is one where I use the gold foil on top of one of the burn sheets of paper. It's just a lot of fun coming up with these different experiments and kind of seeing what I can do with them. But thank you all so much for coming by and checking out my channel, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.